Okay, I have here a machined cap. This has been machined by a, a clever machinist fellow and uh, drilled. I've already tested it for uh, operation. That's why you see some heat, um, heat discoloration. I've shined up the areas I want to braze together on this cap. Um, I'm using Harris Safety Silve 50. Um, you can get this off of eBay. I'm using the Superior number 601 white brazing flux. Um, I got it from McMaster Car, but there are other similar products around. This is the roll of uh, Safety Silve. I took some 400 grit sandpaper and cleaned any oxidation off the wire. It's a 16th inch wire before I cut it into some small pieces. Four of them actually. So I'm going to show you how, to, how I do this. So I take a small artist brush and I just paint on some flux all around the rim of this outer cap. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, um, the inner cap came to me just flat and I put a small indent, I machined a small indent around right where the outer cap needs to go so it'll lock in place. And that's what I'm going to go ahead then and put some flux on, on the inner cap assembly, on the base plate here. I took um, 400, I think, 400, it's 400 or 600, I don't actually remember. Uh, sandpaper to um, the cap so that all the parts that I want to join, the joining surfaces, so that they'd be nice and shiny and clean. Clean metal is the key to brazing. What I'm doing now, uh, now that I've put the flux around the, the inner cap plate where I want it, I put four spots, one, two, three, and four, where I'm going to put the braze wire and I like to snug it right up against the base of the inner cap. It'll flow outward that way I don't have any problems with a piece getting underneath the rim of my cap when I try to put it on here. There you go. And that's why I put those four little blobs of flux on there. So that those pieces of filler wire will have a place to... Uh, okay, now it will have a place to bed in. And that flux, when it flows, will help conduct. So now I'm just locking that in. And into the groove there that I put. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Just a little visual inspection. Okay, this is the. Mm, torch head I'm using. It's a burns whoop, there you go. <laughs> a burns TS-8000. I got mine at Home Depot. It's connected to a Coleman stove hose, which goes down here to a, a five gallon, here, there, a five gallon propane container that I have in a milk crate sitting on the ground here. So I'm just using propane to do this. Nothing fancy. Yeah, sorry. 
<laughs> there. There you go. All right, so got everything in place. That's centered in the groove. Just kind of heating up my uh, kiln blocks so that they're a little warm to begin with so they don't suck the heat away from my grazing. see some of that silver brazing coming out to the edge now. See a nice line of silver all the way around the joining area. Right through here, you can see the silver is all the way around. We're going to let that cool off enough to harden up before I try to move it. Now, to clean this off, what you can do is take these, once once the silver braze filler has, uh, has hardened up, you can actually toss them into some cold water and that'll help scrub them clean but basically I let them cool off and then I throw them in a little container um, and boil boil them up. The boiling water will take a lot of the flux off that black that you see um, and what it doesn't take off uh, you can put on some rubber gloves and use a, a, a wire brush to clean those. So that's the cap and uh, I'll have a I'll go clean this up and show you what it looks like when it's clean. So this is the cap after cleanup. Here, can you come in that close? Okay, so this is the cap after cleanup. That's what it looks like. And uh now we'll go make it look at make <laughs> make it look ugly by burning it on a stove. And then here's a neat trick. This is a Tilly um, device from Tilly, so that you can preheat your stove. I like it because it holds a lot more alcohol than that tiny little depression in the top of the tank. So we'll preheat that. <laughs> there we go. So now while that's going on, um, I thought I'd show this too. So this is a chunk of brass through which I bored through which I bored a hole and uh, 
Then I've taken just um, a quarter 20 threaded um, bolt. Um, and here's what I do with the bolt. Okay, here's, here's another one like it. You can see what I've done is I, I take a hacksaw and just hacksaw down in through the end of the bolt. And I braise in place a little thin sheet of brass or steel. I'm not sure what this one was. It kind of looks brassy. but And you braise that in place so you got little wings. And then that fits down into the recess that I drill into the top of this. I cut two slots all the way through. And it creates a mandrel. And then the you can put that your caps on the mandrel and spin them concentric to the inside um, spigot tube here. And that's how I did the work on this cap for the most part. I have a, a number of these in different sizes and um, for various size caps or various applications and they're easy to make. And I get this brass rod for real, really cheap over at the uh, recycled metal place. Somebody over there is always dumping off like 9 to 12 inch chunks of brass in 9 16 and 5 8 and about a half inch. I don't know what they do with them, but they end up with all these little short pieces they toss over there and I get them for just the cost of the weight. So it's a good deal. Good deal. And this is kind of a useful tool if you're a cap maker. All right, well, we're about there. Let's take this out and blow that out. And uh, let's see what we can do here. All right. So just getting started, of course the stove is going to take a while before it heats up and develops pressure. And uh, we'll give it a few minutes to do that and come on back and see how this is, is looking at that time. Okay, it's been a few minutes and uh, about three or four minutes and it's had a chance to pressure up a little bit more. And uh, you can see the cap's working pretty good. Um, Now, the thing I noticed about this cap is that there's a kind of a yellow discoloration to the flame. This is not the, uh, not the fuel running rich. I was using some of my own caps earlier to take a look at that. But it seems like this brass is, is adding some yellowish, some orangish yellowish to uh, the flame and that may disappear over time as it oxidizes. There may also just be some of the uh, flux that's causing some of that color. It's got that real nice low simmer. Hard to beat that. If I, you, you know, actually that yellow is kind of going away. It may just go away after it burns for a while longer. But I'll, just by contrast, I'll show you uh, one of my hand belts here. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just warming it up some. They don't tend to work real well unless they're warm. Get it a little warm. 
And then we'll do a hot swap here. Yeah, I'm just not getting that yellow. There's a lot of dirt in this cap because it was laying on the floor, actually. <laughs> That's what you see is the yellow streaks. This is blowing the yellow dirt, the uh, particles of dirt out. So I don't know, maybe maybe this other machine cap will go away, I mean, the yellow will go away, or it might be that you want to maybe take a look at uh, what sort of brass you're using. Um, maybe it would be better to try a different flavor of brass or a better quality of brass maybe. So that's that. Let's do another hot swap back. It starts out nice and blue and then just develops that yellow which tells me that it, it's not a fuel issue. It's a contamination issue. Anyway, if it's the flux, it'll burn off in a while. Uh, you know, half an hour, an hour worth of using it, it goes away. If it is the brass, then, you know, you're probably looking at being stuck with kind of a yellow a tinge. But, boy, right now it looks great, so can't complain about that. So there you have it. Oh, one other thing here. Let's do another hot swap and put it back on the flame plate for contrast. Yeah, see we can't get it started because it's too cold. There we go. Even the flame plate will have to warm up and that's why it couldn't get started. If it's if it's too cold, it quenches the flame, so. So that, by contrast, is, is how it's working with the flame plate. Also gives you a little sound contrast, too. Okay. Yeehaw.